Uh, so we came to the point where we decided that it was time to revamp our elementary schedule just to start meeting uh, needs and needs of the students. We need, so we need some more time in certain areas. We need more teacher collaboration time and some just changes uh, with, with how we broke things up in, in departmentalization. So back in October, we got together a team of people that was a revision committee. That consisted of teachers, instructional coaches, principals, supervisors, director, and central office, myself, and, and Dr. Robert Tozzi and the skateboard. So we met in October and we began brainstorming and talked about um, what we would want to see in a schedule and, and why were we doing this schedule. First, we had to have a focus. So we all agreed upon that we wanted to improve the quality of student learning, number one, that's why we wanted to change it. Uh, we wanted to change the school cultures and we wanted to increase time for teacher collaboration. Now we knew that while doing this, we know that there's only so many hours in a day, we couldn't extend the day any longer, so we had to do all of this and get everything we want into a schedule while managing um, the issues and constraints of time and whatever else it may be. So we also decided as a team that we were going to explore all options that there were for elementary schedules, both traditional and non-traditional. So after that first meeting, with all of this in mind, we set out and started doing our homework and, and had everyone thinking about what they would like to see in a schedule. And our next meetings, um, we came to, we, the, the room is a, a room, it's our PDRC room, it's a, it's a wall of whiteboards. So I broke everybody into groups and all the groups went to town. I said, sky's the limit, just pretend that there's no budget, there's no anything, and what would you want to see in an elementary schedule? So everyone began brainstorming and writing down their ideas. We, we took all of that information down, took pictures of everything, and then it was sorted. And a lot of it was reoccurring. We saw a lot of the same thing that, that people were interested in. So we took that information and we came up with a top top list. So the next meeting we had after that, I presented it to the group and said, okay, these were your top, let's say, 15. And we went over them and then we went over them. Of course, there's always some onesies and twosies, you know, outlier things that, you know, one person, because it's, it's something that they uh, think that's necessary to schedule. But we, we went over every single one of them. And we came up with a basically a top 10 list of everything that was really important we would like to see in the schedule. And I am happy to say that we were able to incorporate all of that into the schedule that we have moving forward for next year for elementary school. So some of the things that were on the top of the list, and, and some of the, you know, as parents, some of this might not affect you because this is in the, your child's day-to-day -day routine. Um, for example, now physical education teachers are going to teach health before that was taught by the classroom teacher. Uh, and there was a time allotment for that, so now that's some buyback time for that classroom teacher because now the, the physical education will be taught by the PE teacher. Uh, another thing was they were looking for uninterrupted subject time. The way the schedule worked previously, you know, it was very hard with, um, with our, our electives or specials that we call them, and sometimes blocks would be broken up and, and it might not be conducive to have 15 minutes of science here, and then we have to go to lunch, and then we get another 15 minutes here when you need that time uninterrupted to be able to really get something done or work on a lab or whatever it may be. So we really worked hard toward trying to get uninterrupted subject time so teachers can focus on that subject without it fragmented. Uh, they were looking for a block for reteach and rich win for students, which uh, we are calling it a win period in our schedule, and that means what I need. So this is a time period where students, and this is from grades K through five, where students will have an extra win, extra win periods throughout the week, where it's, let's say, there's a group of student, students who need some uh, remediation in math. Okay, so now these teachers can, uh, these students can work on, on their math remediation, or maybe there's uh, a group with enrichment in uh, language arts, or maybe we didn't have enough time to finish up our science that we need to work on. So there's these periods built in for whatever is needed. Also in this time period, uh, chorus, which previously for students was fourth, I think it's fourth and fifth grade chorus, was a pullout, so they would lose instructional time during that. Now that's incorporated into the win time, so it will be a set schedule on a rotating basis, so that if the students have, um, you know, if the teachers know that okay, our certain fourth and fifth graders are going out to chorus, well now we can focus on whatever else anyone's left in the class with their win time and what's needed for them. So it was a uh, good buyback for that. Departmentalization. We are going to departmentalization in third, fourth, and fifth grade. So that means that teachers will be subject, subject specific. So, and I'll explain a little bit, I'll show you a schedule in a uh, two teacher team. So let's say it's a fourth grade level and there's only two fourth grade classes in the building. Um, that means one teacher will teach language arts and social studies and the other teacher will teach math and science. So they are subject, subject specific, they don't have to focus on all of the subject areas. If it's a three uh, teacher team on a grade level, 
then one teacher will do math only, one teacher will do language arts only, and the third teacher will do science and social studies. We have added technology classes in as an elective. So just like your art, music, PE, um, uh, world language, we now have technology classes that will be given uh, to the students on, on their six day rotation basis. Uh, they were looking for common planning and uh, PLC time, which is a professional learning community time embedded into the schedule. That is there for teachers. You will see as we look at a schedule that teachers across a grade level all have the same common time off. So every second grade teacher across the district is off at a particular time, every third grade, fourth grade, etc. So this is a time where grade level teachers can really collaborate um, and work on you know, what's, what's needed for the students and, and lesson planning and things like that. Daily electives consistent across the grade levels, which we will show you. Uh, this new schedule will operate on a, a six-day rotation schedule. It's going to be a little bit different than a five-day week, but it's, it's very simple, and I'll explain how that works today. That's going to, as a parent, that's going to be the, the hardest thing to keep track of, but we're going to be putting out a calendar with the days, and, and that will be set, and I know the teachers will be reminding all the time. And the only reason for that is, is really just for PE, for physical education, because you, they need to know that they have their sneakers that day and things like that. But other than that, it won't have any effect on what the electives will be. Uh, gifted and Talented program is going school-based. So uh, um, in the past, our Gifted and Talented program was housed at school number 10, and students were bused there. Well, now we're going to be housed in their school. Uh, so the students will remain in their school, and they will have uh, G&T uh, uh, once a day on the on their six-day rotation basis. And the teachers will, will be in their school for that. They're no longer traveling. They have teachers in the building and they remain in their building. Uh, and then just this minor thing, uh, teachers working for AM, PM, home room. You know, we, we all started the day right as soon as the students walked in and that was, you know, that could have been language arts time. So you had a loss of time because it was, let's get our, you know, their coats off, their, if it's winter time, lots of extra clothing to get off, collect the lunch money, things like that. And we now have time embedded at the beginning of the day and the end of the day for those housekeeping things that need to get done and getting the students unpacked and packed up at the end of the day. So all of these were embedded into the schedule. Now, kindergarten, um, kindergarten, first and second grade, pre-K, pre-K is not a part of this because pre-K is tools and that's a little bit, they run on a different schedule. So this is encompassing K through five. So some of the things we see on this end, yeah, here we are, additional changes. Uh, I have mentioned the six-day rotation schedule. So in order to incorporate all of the, uh, the daily electives that happen, because there are six of them, students are going to have art, music, PE and health twice a week, so that's four. We're going to have world language, and world language will be in kindergarten now as well, and technology. So that's six different electives that they will have across the six-day rotation cycle. And then, so for example, if uh, school next year starts on Thursday, September 6th, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. So September 6th, Thursday is day one, Friday is day two, Monday is day three, Tuesday four, five, six, ends on Thursday. So then day one begins again the following Friday. So it's, it's constantly in succession and that's it. So whatever a child has always on day one throughout the year, they will have that same thing on day one all the time. So the teachers will absolutely, like I said, that's probably the most difficult for parents because wondering what they have that day, if it's, if it's phys ed day or not. But the teachers will absolutely send that schedule home so you know what, uh, what day every elective is. Okay. Uh, one of the other things we're adding is a phonics component into the kindergarten. There will be an emphasis on that. We're bringing in a foundations program to, to do a little more focus on, on phonics. We found that that was a need. And also, handwriting will absolutely be um, given in the third grade. That will be a focus in third grade. Mm. It will, yes. What's going to happen, I mean, it's going to be a little transition, but third grade, so what will happen is they will learn the handwriting in third grade, and then when they move on to fourth and fifth grade, the writing pieces that they do, writing pieces, certain ones will be required to continue with the handwriting, yeah, so they practice. Because, I mean, I, I ask my children to do the handwriting, mm -hmm. but I mean, the teacher, I mean, don't push them that mm -hmm. way, and there is all this, you know, this agreement between me and my children, mm -hmm. and, you know, me and me is like, mother who is pushing and then you know right. what's also concerning when you send those chunks to a school teacher sometimes they return they don't check spell mm -hmm. I mean like they some sometimes they tell me oh eventually they'll learn how to spell the words what does it mean eventually they will learn I mean if the child will 
sure that this word is like you know if nobody corrects him and he's sure that the word how supposed to like he pronounce he write it down and he will remember it that way how and that would be something to discuss with the you know whoever child teacher is next year concerned with that but with the handwriting we absolutely will have that will be embedded in the curriculum in third grade and then in fourth and fifth grade they will be required to continue that in some of their writing lessons no, it's just, I mean, what's the concern in the homework, how, or classwork, how many of your parents see the classwork during the year, the teacher send it, like on a weekly period? I don't see the, the classwork, but I think, like, we'll be time though. we want to continue with the presentation so we can go with that. So, so now what you're looking at here, and I know this gets a little bit confusing, okay, there's a lot of blocks up there, but just so, so you can look at that quickly, this would be, um, Student schedules. This is an example of a three teacher team. So that would mean that there's, let's say, three fourth grade teachers in, at that grade level in that particular school. All right, so what happens is then the students get broken down into homeroom with each teacher. So what you would have is you would have group one, group two, and group three. So that's, let's say, your 60 fourth graders across a grade level, and they're broken up with each teacher. Um, what you see is in, any of the blocks in red are language arts time. The blocks in blue are math time, orange is social studies, and the green is science, okay? We have gray areas in there that are writing time. We have yellow, which is when, which that could change accordingly. Remember, this is just a sample schedule of what the components would be. Uh, and then, obviously, we have lunch recess. That has not changed, so the students have their, their lunch and recess time. And then we have a, a lighter color there, which is their, like a teal color. That's their electives. So that's the time where they, every day at the same time, they'll either have art, music, PE, world language, or technology. And that's the time that the teachers have common walk time. Yes? Hi, how does this schedule work with students that are in pull-out? Will the pull-out classes follow? Match, yes. Okay. They, right. We're in the process of that right now. We have the skeleton framework of this, and this schedule is also going to Genesis. So for those of you who have students in the middle or high school, and you know that you can pull up and see schedules and see things in there, this is going to be in Genesis. We have the skeleton framework in there currently right now. As soon as we do our rollover uh, in two weeks, mm -hmm. then we will have our new students enrolled in the homerooms, mm -hmm. and then we are creating the schedules. We, I have a scheduling team, uh, my supervisors who are working with the principals and the supervisor of, of um, elementary special education, and they will sit together and make sure that it matches. So if a child is in a pullout uh, in that school, the, the grade levels will match. So that's why I say, like, here it is. It, it could be, this is the components of it, but it could be tailored a little bit differently for every school at grade level, depending on the needs with um, special education students or ESL students, Thank because you. we want to make that match. Thank you. Okay. I have a question on the schedule. Like, yes. Just sticking on the page. So each class, I guess, if it's 10 kids in a class, they're going to go to each, you know, world language. They're going to go to PE. They're going to go to everything at the same time. And that one, like, how does that? I guess I'm, I don't understand how it's going to work. Oh, wait, for the elections, you mean? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, just this is now. So if, if it's. I don't have a child. In, okay, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so, yeah. so if it's. Um, so for example, if I'm a language arts teacher. Yes. Okay, and, and I, let, me, let me show you this. I'm going to go to this one next. These are the teacher schedules. Okay. So now, blue, that's the math teacher. This, and this is for a three person team. Language arts is red, and then science and social studies are red. So let's say that I'm a language arts teacher. I have a group of students that are my group of students. Okay. okay? So what's going to happen is group, group one will be assigned PE on a certain day. They go to that. It's only that okay. one. No, it's not okay. all 60 of them going together. Okay. It's, it's broken down by class, and they all go through the electives. Okay. Just to so, say, what? so when it's the win, is it going to be different? If I, if I need help in math, is it going to be different kids from Correct, different yes. classes? So that's where the teachers win? will collaborate okay. on all of their pool of students and say, okay, okay we have we have you know 15 students who need this, we have 10 who need this. Let's see how we can break them down so they're getting they're meeting their needs that way. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay, so this is the three team schedule. So if your child is at a grade level, third, fourth, or fifth grade level next year that has three teachers, three classes across that grade level, that's that's how this would look. Um, when we go to the two teacher team schedule. All right, as I said before, it's broken down. Once again, same, same configuration, language arts, math, science, and social studies. The teachers, um, language arts and social studies are paired up, and math and science are paired up. Okay, so the students are just going back, back and forth between the two teachers with that, but it, it basically works the same. They still have their win periods, they still have their electives across the board during that same time period. Okay. 
So, as, so K1 and 2 remain there with their same teacher all day long. Okay, that does not change. Third, fourth, and fifth, we have, they have the, the different teachers for departmentalization. And that will, you know, it, now that gives the teacher the focus so that they can focus on just one or two subject areas. So, um, you know, we can, we can concentrate on more of the needs of the students, whether there's enrichment, whether there's remediation or what's needed. And the students will have the opportunity built into the schedule to be able to uh, have their needs met as well. Oh, that this was just a teacher uh, angle of it. You should see the two teachers. And are there any other questions? Yes. I have one question. With the technology, what are the subjects that's going to be taught with the technology? The subjects are okay. Uh, well, right, they're currently they're working on the curriculum. This is something new that we brought oh, in. So this summer they they are working on writing the curriculum, okay. and they will be. There, there's standards that are for each grade level currently now by the, the New Jersey Student Learning Standards. So they will be using those as a guideline in order to create what the curriculum will be taught at each grade level. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about the groups, how many children are assigned to like each group? Each uh, that all depends on, on the number of students enrolled but in that grade level. But do like to certain? Or? How many? I mean, it's the same as our class sizes now. Nothing's changed. So if you're assigned a class, I mean, uh, uh, I think many of our classes can run I think that anywhere from 15 to 25 students, probably. I mean, it depends on how many are enrolled in that school at that grade level. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's the time for green? The time for when? Those are everything is working on uh, 40 minute periods. 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the, and the electives are 40 minutes as well. Yes. Have you guys created metrics or anything to measure how successful the program is? That, well, we, we have not yet. No, I mean, okay. we're just we're rolling this out, and like I said, we'll. We're are going there to, are there plans to just to make sure? I mean, because if we're looking for certain things to show that it's successful, will you like gauge that to see if it's working, and if not, maybe change something else? Absolutely. I mean, we okay. did the same thing with our middle school schedule as well. We rolled that okay. out two years ago now, and okay. after the first year, we made changes to it. And okay. obviously, we know this is you know first year, so yeah, there will be kinks. So we plan on learning from our mistakes with it and going back and making any changes that are necessary to. to okay. So if it's a 40 minutes uh, uh, period, so it will be break between the periods, you know, like, uh, I mean, or they switch in the classroom, so they stay there. One the classroom. teachers will remain in the classrooms and the students will, will move to the classrooms. Right. And what's happening now is the teacher, the principals, they, they have their teachers paired up. So if it's two teacher or three teacher, they are putting them in close proximity. So, you know, if I'm a student on a three teacher team, I could have one teacher across the hall and one teacher next door. So the teachers are all always working together with the students and, and moving that transition time. So it's, it's good as well, too, because now they have a little bit of a movement, uh, you know, some time for a little bit of exercise. They get up and they change, and the teachers are with them on that with that transition time. Yes? Is the hours for the school the same? Hours do not change, correct. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Very much. changes were really something where the vast majority of these ideas came from our teachers and uh, the people who work with your children every single day. So we'd like to think that this is going to be a very positive change for our district. Uh, as Mrs. Cleary stated, of course, we'll evaluate it uh, as we go along through the process. And at the end, and if changes are necessary, we'll, we'll make them if it's in the best interest of our kids. So thanks for those who came out tonight. Uh, for this presentation. If you just came out for this presentation, um, that's about as exciting as it's going to get. <laughs> You're more than welcome to stay. Um, make yourself comfortable. We have uh, one last thing in my superintendent's report, Mr. Tobolesky. Uh, we have a gentleman in the audience tonight who's, who I pretty much had to threaten to come here tonight to be recognized because he does a lot of things for uh, the children in our district um, that goes unrecognized. And he doesn't do these things to be recognized. So in order for me to get in here tonight just to give him this beautiful certificate, uh, really uh, took it off a lot because he, he, he does it from his heart. He, um, he has donated much time effort and money out of his own pocket, uh, most recently for one of our students' 
uh, who was uh, diagnosed with leukemia. And uh, I, I see Isabella is here tonight. I, um, I can't believe that she's here. That's oh, wonderful. That's sweet. Um, I can't say enough about what Mark Manutza does. Uh, he's a, a parent uh, in our district. His uh, children went through our schools. He's been a lifelong uh, Linden resident. And uh, besides all the work he did for Isabel, there's a lot of other things that he does, and yes. I don't want to embarrass him um, anymore. But I do want to ask Mr. Shehada to say a few words, uh, because he has also worked with Mr. Manutza pretty closely. Mr. Shehada. First, I'd like to apologize for being late. It was a really, really bad accident on the park plant. Mm -hmm. But uh, good evening, guys. Good evening. Uh, as a kid and even as an adult, I've always aspired to be like some politician, some athlete, or some celebrity in Hollywood. Now, I, I aspire to be someone like Mark. For as long as I can remember, Mark has been an active member in our community. I realized this in person after I was fortunate enough to be elected to the Board of Education. Throughout my short time on the board, I witnessed Mark donate money out of his own pocket to our district. I have been fortunate enough to work Mark on a fundraiser for Isabel Dominguez, where Mark put money out of his own pocket to help pay for the venue. I have witnessed Mark orchestrate a, fun uh, a car show fundraiser, excuse me, where the proceeds went to the same child. Every time I ask Mark, what makes you do this, he always says, I was raised old school, bro. <laughs> this is a testament to the amazing human beings who raised him, and this is the mentality he passes down to his own children, along with his amazing wife, who are all active in our community and public service in their own right. Mark Lutz is the definition of spreading love the Linden way. Mm -hmm. What I found in my old, old 25 years of life <laughs> is that the change we really make comes about when we come together as one, regardless of race or religion, sexual preference or political ideologies, and just lend a hand. It has a ripple effect that will outlast us all. I will end with this. Love with all your heart. Let your love speak volumes. Let your love be courageous. Make change in this world because change will not roll in on the wheels of certainty. It is carried on the backs of unyielding lovers. Mark, on behalf of the board, on behalf of our community, we thank you for everything you do from the bottom of our hearts. And we love you.
would just like to say something if you don't mind that. My daughter Stacy called me one night and um, she called me crying. I said, Stace, where are you? She goes, I'm at the gym. I said, I'm on my way there. Of course she was. So she goes, no, no, Dad, there's a girl in our school that was diagnosed with leukemia. Her mother called and said her car broke down. And they had to walk from the train station after getting chemotherapy. And she says, you know, they're in a, in a bad way. I said, Stace, tell me where the car is. I will pick it up. I'll pay for the repair. Needless to say, we brought the car back. The car needed a motor. We called every junkyard in New Jersey. One place had it. The guy said, it's $400 for the motor. I said, I'll be down here tomorrow. Pick it up. I go down there and I see the owner of the junkyard, T&T Auto Records in Saraville. I told him exactly what it was for. He took my check and ripped it up. Oh my, my business partner donated the labor to put the motor in the car for her. Mm -hmm. So there are good people in this world. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to say thank you to everybody and I appreciate it. Thank you. Doctor, thank you. Thank you.
27 approves Saturday school dates. 28 approves a tuition agreement with the Union County Vocational Schools. 29 grants permission for a teacher to conduct her principal internship. 30 approves a school self-assessment for determining grades under the Anti-Bullying Bill of Rights Act. 31 grants approval to enter into an agreement with Union County Ed Services Commission. 32 and 33 approve the submissions of the IDEA application and the security drill statement of assurance. 34 grants permission of Family Center CDC to conduct a tutoring program at School 2. 35 accepts the Student Safety Data System Report for uh, Report Period 1. And item 36 approves the superintendent's determination and actions taken for all reported incidents of harassment, intimidation, and bullying as discussed at the May 22nd, 2018 regular meeting. Mr. President, I move curriculum and instruction items 1 through 36 and respectfully ask for a second. Second. Roll form. This is Bebiano. Yes. Mrs. Bird? Yes. William? Yes. Mrs. Doza? Yes. Mr. Mortusi? Yes. Mr. Shahar? Yes. Mrs. Bolani? Yes. Mrs. Welch? Yes. Mr. Tucker? Yes. Uh, support operations? Oh, wait. Oh, right there. Management operations? Mrs. Bolani? I don't know how we skip that. The Management Operations Committee, upon recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, Present the following motion to the Union Board of Education for approval. Item number one, the following retirements are accepted with regret. Dr. Robert Tilly, Thank you, Mrs. Fulani. Uh, Ms. Cynthia Kohler is retiring from the Linden Public Schools as an elementary teacher. She's worked in the district since 1999 uh, as a first and fifth grade teacher at schools one, five, and six. Uh, Mrs. Helen Cohen has worked for the Board of Ed for 19 years uh, as a part-time school aide uh, at School Aid her entire career. And Mrs. Uh, Lenora Metzganich has worked for the London Board of Ed for 22 years as a part-time aide at School Aid. On behalf of the administration, faculty, and staff, and the board, we want to wish uh, those three employees a happy and healthy and very long retirement. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rattini. Item number two accepts the following resignations as listed. Item number three amends, amends board action on past management operation reports. Item number four amends the location of following staff effective line 118. Items number five, nine, I'm sorry. Item number five is for um, various appointments, including, a vice president position for uh, Mr. Fikidi. Oh, um, what? I, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 you have for vice principal. Um, I keep calling Mrs. Tabaleski to be principal too. Uh, <laughs> items number the number, there is about items number five, nine, 11, 12, 13, uh, 11 through 17, 19 through 27, 29 through 41, 51, 53 through 57, and 59 through 62 are for uh, various appointments and reappointments for a variety of positions. Item number six is to approve the transfers as listed below. Item number seven is to approve assignment upon returns from leave. Item number eight approves the following leaves of absences as listed. Item number nine appoints uh, Mr. McCollivis as acting principal at school eight from August 1st through December 31st. Item number 10 approves the change of degree for 2018-2019. Item number 18 approves the lead teacher for the exchange program as listed. Item number 28, approves additional summer work for the following counselors from July 9th to August 23rd. Item number 42, 3, 4, and 5, a variety of correction or donation of sick days for employees numbers 16, 17, 18, and 19, day 1718, and the, is on file with, with the superintendent. Item number 46, 
restores the increment of employee number 18, 17-18. Items number 47, 48, and 49 is for uh, increment adjustments for employees 13, 14, and 15. Dash 1718. Item number 15, uh, that is the approval of the quantitative goal of the superintendent, which is um, which are in the hands of the board members, and that the administ business administrator and board secretary will forward a copy of that to the Union County Superintendents of Schools. And number 52 is to compensate custodial staff for holding boiler licenses as listed. Number 58 is to approve staff listed below to perform nursing duties during August 2018 uh, as listed. Mr. President, I move items 1 through 62 for management operations and respectfully ask for a second. Second. Roll call. Mrs. Beniano, yes. Mr. Bird, yes. Mrs. Williams, yes. Mrs. Poza, yes. Mr. Martucci, yes. Mr. Shimano, yes. Mrs. Bolani, yes. Mrs. Well, yes. Mr. Tabler, yes. Now, Mr. Martucci, support operations. And the uh, Support Operations Committee upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools and the Business Administrative Board Secretary presents the following motion to the Linden Board of Education. I'd like to move finance number 1 through 48 and facilities 1 through 2 and ask for a second. Second. Roll call, please. Mrs. Gaviano? Yes. Mrs. Burge? Yes. Mrs. Gillian? Mrs. Kozak? Yes. Mr. Martin? Yes. Yes to all, but abstain to number 29. Mrs. Volani? Yes to all, except abstain, abstain from Volani Bus Company, number 40. Mrs. Welsh? Yes. Mr. Chavalet? Yes. Staying in policy, Mr. Shah. I have nothing this month. Thank you, sir. Negotiations committee, Mrs. Milano. Uh, we've had several meetings on uh, both sides. We seem to be continuing to move forward. We have two other dates set up coming up for the month of July, and hopefully we'll have a better uh, the next to the answer. Um, a settlement, maybe this month. Thank you, Mrs. Milano. EST for parents, you didn't have a high school, right? Yes, they did. You did have high art. Right. Well, both. Okay. <laughs> uh, we held our last parent EST meeting for the 2017-2018 school year on June 12th at McManus Middle School. It started at 7 p.m. Uh, parents representing schools 1, 2, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, McManus, Solana High School attended. Uh, Mrs. Cleary did a presentation of the new elementary school schedule. She did a thorough job explaining how we came to decide the depart departmentalization of the elementary school new schedule. And she also did a thorough job explaining the changes that were being made. Uh, she showed examples of the new schedules and took questions from the parents that attended the meeting. We know how important it is to keep the lines of communication open with parents, and we want to make you aware of all the changes that are occurring within the district. So that's why we held that presentation. Uh, we sent out an, e an email uh, with a letter explaining it, and we also did another presentation here tonight. Um, this is our main voyage of the departmentalization of the elementary schools, and like all new things, there may be some glitches, room for improvement, or changes that need to be made, and we'll be visiting this and getting feedback so that we can make sure we have a solid program for our children. And if you have any questions or concerns regarding this new schedule, you can call, uh, contact Mrs. Cleary, Dr. Robert Dozy, or any of the board members via email or phone. Uh, after Mrs. Cleary finished her portion, uh, we went into our regular EST meeting, and uh, we had uh, some parents that expressed some concerns about recess, how much time they were receiving in the, on the elementary level. Uh, were there any breaks for snacks and water, and how can we possibly make uh, time for that? There were some concerns with the G&T testing. Parents said the children were rushed while taking the test, 
and that the letter explaining the testing went home after the testing occurred. That wasn't in all of the buildings, just in some. Uh, parents like to know if we could give a stipend for child care for our PTA board, our PTA, our board meetings, and our parent EST meetings, so that children have a safe place to be while attending our meetings. Some of the safety concerns were brought to our attention about voting day at our schools. While voting is taking place, there's no way to monitor who's coming in and out of our building, and if they should be there or if not, you know, whoever is voting. Um, we do check IDs for parents on a daily basis um, entering our building. So for strangers that are entering, we uh, did not do that. But we are now aware of that, and we are going to be definitely looking into that. Um, there was some concerns about fun days at some of the schools and the safety about the children playing out and utilizing the parks while the children are outside. Uh, with um, other people interacting on the playground, so we're going to be uh, looking into that also. Uh, the parents would like to know if Pomptonian can serve water as a choice with milk during lunchtime uh, and not have to pay for um, extra for the water. And there are some parents that are having uh, some hard time with crediting their children's accounts when giving cash when they are going to Pomptonian. Um, it was also brought to our attention that IDs were being checked via picture on parents' cell phones rather than parents physically showing their IDs in hand. And uh, there were some several concerns about the special needs classrooms at school, too. Um, parents were, had some concerns, and um, they wanted to know about filing reports at the before care and after care for bullying of students or students maybe putting their hands on each other and the process of how this is handled during the before care and after care and how they should be receiving feedback once a report is filed. There's a fence that was damaged at school six and it was a safety concern for, um, for all the students due to the severity of the damage. And I always report back to Dr. Robert Tozzi after all of our meetings. Uh, we discuss what's going on. Uh, in most cases, some of the situations are handled that day or if they were not handled immediately after, and some other issues take some time. It was a pleasure to sit and chat with the parents that attended our parent EST meetings. It was nice to see we could answer questions or clear concerns sometimes right in the meeting and even more so to see the parents interacting and giving suggestions to how they solve their situations. We hope that you all will come back in September and bring a friend and your friend bring a friend. Uh, tell them we have coffee and cookies and those famous brownies. I almost think you all come just for the brownies. <laughs> so stay tuned for our 2018-2019 meeting schedule. That concludes my parent EST report. Thank you, Mrs. Birch. Now, the high school ESD group now, board leaves Mrs. Birch. Thank you, Mrs. Birch, because you're a vital, um, this is vital for the you know, success of the board, so thank you for joining us. So our June 4th meeting for the student EST was in the library, and uh, we had breakfast for our students. Uh, Mr. Fikidi, our advisor, attended. Uh, there were 13 of our students, four gentlemen, nine ladies. Uh, the breakdown were four freshmen, three sophomores, four juniors, and two seniors. Um, we did um, have some discussion before we went into our breakfast. So uh, they were expressing some concerns about the machines in the weight room. They said um, that they needed to be fixed. Um, they said the water pumps were leaking and the pipes in the weight room were leaking. And uh, they were asking for sandy wipes to clean the machines after use. And they also said that the electronics on our bikes were not working. Um, the next uh, item that we discussed, and uh, they didn't think I was going to uh, bring this up in our meeting, but I told them that they brought it up, so I have to bring it up. <laughs> no, it is not. Uh, they would like to know if they have an A average as a senior, if they could be exempt from taking their finals. <laughs> no, 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 not seniors. Not, not seniors. No, no, not everybody. Every night. Oh, they want everybody? Because okay. seniors so right are seniors. It's just seniors. They wanted everybody. Okay. Got it. Um, they, I'm not necessarily opposed. 
I consider it. Okay. Um, and they said that if um, there was a problem, they were they're trying to work it all out with how are students going to get to school for other reasons and with the busing. So they were they were working really hard at this. Uh, the schedule for their finals they said hurt this year, but I think that was due to our snow days and all of that other stuff. So they they said it was crunch time and and they were they were put to the test. But I know they all uh, pulled through and did very well. Uh, uh, some of the seniors, their, their perspective was the school has progressed and updated, and they're happy that they were a part of helping the progression of Linden High, and they're looking forward to coming back and seeing the changes that they were a part of. Uh, all of the students were honored to be a part of our student EST. They were very excited about the upcoming school picnic, and one of the things they also wanted to see was um, an academic hallway, like the sports hallway, and almost like a wall of academics. So, um, no, they want to see that in the high school, like a wall of academics. Um, I think each, um, you know, they're doing the design. I think each yes. department is doing it now. Yes, each department. So now they'd like to see. I guess they're valedictorian, they're salutatorian, and all of that's showcased. Uh, I am extremely lucky and honored to sit with my EST students and engage in conversations that not only discuss the concerns of the high school, but also all of the positive aspects the district has to offer. Each student truly advocated for what their passions were. I will miss all of the seniors that will be leaving this year, and I'm looking forward to seeing my sophomores, juniors, and seniors again, and of course, welcoming the freshmen in September. They're an amazing group of children that represent our district in such a positive and caring way. I also would like to take this time to thank Mr. Fakiti and Mrs. Tori for all of their time and help facilitating our meetings, for listening to all the students' concerns, and acting on some of the most important issues almost immediately for them. I know it makes a difference when our students know we're listening and know that we do care. So that concludes my report. Thank you very much. No, I'd just like to just say one thing I, as far as the middle school is concerned. Uh, we had the opportunity to be at the sole graduation today, uh, Ms. G, Ms. Kozak, and I, and, uh, and Dr. Robertosi. And uh, I'd just like to compliment, uh, actually, Mr. Molinaro and staff and uh, the PTA president, Ms. Griffith, she was there. I want to tell you, very efficient run operation. We had 200 kids, believe me, if you, I put together these things for many, many years with middle school. And uh, we started at 10 o'clock on the dot. 200 kids were done at 11.03, not a name was mispronounced, no one tripped. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, it does happen. No, 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 no. And I do like to compliment everybody because I tell you, it was a very well running uh, whole operation and it was a great time and I wish the best to everybody. And again, thank you because it was a job well done. And you can pass it on. Was there a, uh, yeah. Okay. Ed Services Commission. Yes. So uh, we had they had um, appointed the directors uh, for an, I guess for the following the following meeting and which were fifteen and I was one of them. <coughs> um, they did recognition of the retirees and uh, and uh, teacher recognitions. There were two. They also had a UCA, UCAS, um, which is also considered for student recognition, staffs and student success, stones of exiting or, or hardship. Um, they made it, uh, they want to address the vaping. Uh, it's really an issue right now, and they're sneaking it into the classrooms. So, so far, uh, Elizabeth is successful with maintaining the vaping and cigarette smoking. So, um, what they're trying to do now is find a training so that teachers and staff can attend so that they can eliminate um, the vaping. Uh, they also, for ESY, they're seeking uh, paraprofessionals and anyone who is interested are more than welcome to apply. Uh, they had graduation, which was on uh, June 9th, 
And they also had two carnivals, um, which was awesome, and they had a lot of students and parents come out. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gill. Okay, state and county delegate report. County delegate first. Uh, that's, that's me because I'm county president. <laughs> we had a, a county association leadership meeting in Trenton uh, on June 2nd. Uh, the main presentation at, the side, at, at that particular meeting was from uh, <clears throat> A health educator from South Jersey Prenatal Care about, of all things, vaping. Uh, vaping is a big issue, especially now that the new uh, vapes uh, devices are made to look like uh, oh, USB yeah, flash, drives. flash drives and not cigarettes, and, and that's purposeful. The whole idea is because uh, cigarette smoking has been so downgraded and it's so bad. Uh, they weren't getting the sell of the vaping stuff because it looked like a cigarette. So they decided to make it look different, and it's picked up. And there's a lot of bad stuff. I have some uh, contact information for you, Dr. Rubin, you that get posters and stuff in the school district. Um, the other thing is the tentative dates for the county meetings for next year have been set, uh, although the topics have not been established. Uh, I will give uh, at the I will give the dates at the next meeting because uh, at the July meeting we should have the top topics settled full stop. So I will give those to you if you have ideas because we haven't had that meeting yet. If anyone has an idea what they'd like to see covered at the county meeting, uh, let me know and I certainly will bring that uh, to the fold when we make when we have our meeting. It's, it's about uh, three or four of us. As far as the state is concerned. Uh, the governor did sign a bill that permits board members to run as a team, which means that you only need to cast, uh, I believe, one vote for all three people, or two, whatever the team makes up. I don't know how that works. I don't know if the county even knows how it works yet. Uh, but that bill was signed. Uh, and you may or may not be aware, and I believe it was Thursday, uh, the legislature passed a budget which has not yet been vetoed or signed by the governor. And I will just say that if the budget holds the way it is, uh, we will be in good shape. Uh, that concludes my Okay. Safety committee? Security? What? Yes. Yeah. Security safety committee. The only thing I want to touch upon right now is that um, we have had a discussion about next year for um, primary day, because we're already closed for election day. So Dr. Opportunity is working on something for next year. It was an issue that we weren't prepared for. We just, we just weren't, I'll admit to that. Um, but it will be rectified for next year. Um, we are going over and looking at all the uh, new initiatives that we put in place, seeing how they're working, what we can improve upon, what needs to be changed. And uh, as far as the pictures, the ID on the phone, I think we've all come to the <coughs> agreement that that was going to be acceptable. So um, if anybody has any other questions, you can most certainly reach out to me and we can discuss it at a present meeting. Does Alana maybe want to mention some of the work we're doing this summer? Okay, so one of the things that we are going to be doing, uh, so every building is going to have the retention vestibule, is that the official name? Okay, so we're not calling it the As band trap. Non, <laughs> non, non the non-gender, the non-binary gender, yes. Um, <laughs> like in the high school, if you've been in the high school where you walk into one door, um, you still have another door that you have to get through. That area there has been colloquially called the man trap or the retention vestibule. Uh, it's just another layer of protection from somebody walking into the building. They still have to be buzzed in again. Every building, I believe, is going to be completed for the summer. God willing. God willing. Um, that they're going to have that, that extra layer of protection. So some of the buildings are going to be easier than others. Some are going to do a little bit more work, a little bit more finagling, but we're on our way. And that uh, concludes my report.
Thank you, Mr. Lawney. All right, now to accept a motion to go into executive session for the purposes of discussing personnel. So moved. Second. Roll call. Yes. Mrs. Birch? Yes. Mrs. Gillian? Yes. Mr. Kozak? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Shahada? Yes. Mr. Bologna? Yes. Mr. Tuckett? Yes. Uh, we're leaving. You can stay because we're not, we don't want to throw you out in the holes. And uh, action may be taken when we return. All in favor? Uh, All aye. Opposed? Abstains? You're back in. Okay, we're back in session. Ms. Guillaume? Yes. Yeah. Oh, so I wanted to talk about that. No, no, no. The motion. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, motion to appoint employee number 1 18 19 for the 2018 2019 school year. Uh, at no, at a location to be determined. Oh, sorry. At a location to be determined. Second. Go for it. Mrs. Bebiano? Yes. Mrs. Birch? Yes. Ms. Gilliam? Yes. Ms. Kozak? Yes. Mr. Martusi? Yes. Mr. Shahada? No. Mrs. Bellani? Yes. Mrs. Welsh? Yes. Mr. Topolesi? No. Okay, comments from board members. Go ahead. So I would like to talk about graduation. It was my first year at Linden High School graduation, and uh, I actually wore my Linden High School dress when I graduated from high school. And it was always my dream to be a board member and hopefully to sit on that stage and to look at the graduating class and to shake hands. And it was just really awesome to see my other fellow board members get hugs from their, their students, I mean, not their students, but their uh, children, um, their children's friends, or people that they inspired. <coughs> So I think it was a phenomenal experience, and I was just honored to be there. Thank you. Anyone else have any comments? I do. Ahead, so just really quickly, I, I, I hope everyone was listening, and I hope everyone heard Dr. Robert Hosey when he said that 83% of our students are attending a two- or four-year university. I think that's really awesome. Um, it says a lot about our school district, about our teachers, and... Um, just get the word out there, people. Let everyone know, 83%, that is really huge. And the kids that are entering the military, kudos, congratulations to them as well. The kids that are going to work, God bless you, good luck in your future. And um, I think, you know, we have an awesome school district here. Thanks. Me too. Anyone else? I also neglected to mention that we have the Commissioner of Education oh, in the keynote awesome. address. And he said that he was invited to over 60 different commencement ceremonies throughout the state, except one of which was Lincoln. So it was nice to have him. And I just want to mention that when we talk about our RTC program, we have, for those of you that may not be aware, we have three young ladies who are going to Rutgers University in the Naval ROTC on a full ride. And when they graduate, they will be commissioned officers in the United States Navy. That's impressive. The fact that we got three, not one, that says a lot about our program and it says a lot about our kids. And they're going to Rutgers so too. So and they're going, are you, are you, rah, rah. <laughs> okay. I will accept the motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.